<clears throat> so she has given him six sons. And I want to um, speak of this last one, Sabinon. Now, if you guys have, guys have a different translation, translation other than King James, I'm reading King James. Will you read uh, that verse? Verse 20. Verse 20. 20. Then Leah said, God has presented me with a precious gift. This time my husband will treat me with honor because I have borne him six sons. I want you to remember. I want you to remember uh, how some translations translated uh, differently this, this scripture. All right. <clears throat> Now, the word dowry, what, what does that word mean? Um, you, guys, you guys are familiar with that, that word? Yes? No? Maybe? Do you have a different translation, Solomon? Dowry. Not, not. The other translation doesn't say Asiatism. Let me see. It says, oh, in, in what? Yeah, no, it, that one is here too, and dude, and then with a good what? What does it say in your translation? Oh, Just read the verse. Let's see what okay. we do. And Leah said, God has imbued me with good dowry. That's the word. Uh-huh. What is that word, dowry? Okay. What do, you, what do you guys got for dowry? You guys know that word? You, I know you know that word. Yeah, but I don't know. Okay. Reward well, because the word Shabulon means reward, that that's what it means. But she is making a reference that is that is uh, that is a, a a specific type of reward. I want to tell you dowry. I have had to deal with this a long, 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 long time in the many countries where I've been. Yeah. <clears throat> dowry is what people give or pay the the guy when he wants to get married. Now, those of you who are American, just thank God you're American. <laughs> because you don't have to do this. At least most of you don't. But in this, in these countries, and I'm talking right now, if you want to get married, for example, in places like Sudan, you know, the girl is worth, what, 40 cows. I'm not making that up, for real. I mean, I've been, I've been there. Now, if she's like the daughter of a really important person, it's going to be more. If she's really pretty, it's going to be a lot of cows. <laughs> she's not, maybe we, we can bargain a little. <laughs> it's strange. I've asked some of these young guys that are trying to get married, hey, what up? I mean, why, why don't you guys, you know, think that it's too much that they're asking for, to, for you to get married? And well, you know, it used to be we had to go kill a lion or a tiger. And I'll be like, well, that... I get you. I mean, the cow is not trying to kill you anyway. Mm. <clears throat> so this is a strange phrase from her, and I will tell you why. The dowry was given by the guy to the family of the girl, the father, so that you could get married to the girl. Now, she's making a phrase here. She's saying... God has given me, God has rewarded me, God has given me a good dowry. Meaning that she's saying, I got a dowry to pay somebody. Now, why is this strange? Because she's the woman. She doesn't need a dowry. But you have to understand where she's coming from. In fact, she calls the boy a reward. And it is not a reward for her. She's saying, I got these six sons. And with this, I can actually capture the love of my husband. It is the cry of a person who has been rejected at home by her father. And ignored later on by her husband. So all of her life, she has known rejection and being ignored. And when she gets married, she gets to compete with the perfect sister she has. Don't you hate it when you have a perfect sibling? 
She wasn't perfect, but she was, if you read the story, you will find out that she captured her man the first day that she saw him. And every son that she had from that moment on was to try to capture the love of her husband, Leah. She had one named Reuben. She said, now my husband will love me. Two, Levi, uh, Simeon, now my, my husband will love me. Three, Levi, now my husband will love me. And he goes on and on and on and on until we get to Sabulon. Her whole aim and her whole heart is to capture that heart, and she's not succeeding. And in this last one, you'll find that profound statement that she makes when her boy is born, Sabulon. She says, I have a daughter. She's using the figure of a boy who goes up to ask for the hand of the daughter and say, I have the dowry. I have the way for you to give me that daughter of yours. But she's the woman. What is she saying? I have enough to pay and capture whatever I want and whatever I want from you to her husband. Let me tell you why this is such a sad statement. She didn't capture it. But in that little phrase, in that birth of that child, is capture a pursuit that man has. We think at some point, if I just do enough, let me give you an example that you'll understand. It's like the father or the mother who does not think that they have the love of their child for whatever reason. Maybe because they're absentee, maybe because they got divorced. And whatever it is, they cannot seem to capture that boy's heart, that girl's heart. So what they do is buy them toys, buy them an, an Xbox, buy them whatever clothes they want, give them a trip. They, they think if I can only give him whatever he asks, maybe he will love me. It's like buying love. She thinks because I keep giving him sons, surely I am going to capture his love. You're going to find out something. There are circumstances and things that you cannot buy. It's like the guy who is in love with some girl and wants her, her heart. And he thinks if I can just buy him flowers every day until it looks like a garden in that house. I could bring the best chocolates everywhere. If I could just, you know, buy her whatever she needs. She's going to love me. I have a daughter. It happens in ministry. There are some in the ministry who act this way. Like if they're a politician and they want to get the vote. I'm just going to do and say whatever you want me to say so that you can want me as a leader or as a pastor. <coughs> Let me tell you something. You can do whatever you desire in some instances like this, and you will never capture what you're looking for. Love cannot be bought. It can be rented, but it cannot be bought. The pursuits that we have as men, as humans, have to be based on God's desires. The aim of her life was to capture the heart of her husband, and that is okay. But she needed to have lifted up her eyes higher, because the one who mattered was not the one who slept in her bed. It was the one who sits upon the throne. The circumstances have brought her to this place, and what she's doing is capturing everything 
that God has given her. God has given her his six sons. Read the passages. Every son, the Bible says, and God saw her affliction. And God heard that she was not loved. And God wanted to bless her. God, 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 God. And she kept saying, I want this, 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 this. This is what I need to tell you. God in his infinite mercy is the one who gives you a life, gives you a ministry, gives you food, gives you shelter. It has not been your job. And it has not been anybody who's around you. It is God who sits upon the throne. And when you lift up your eyes, this is what the Bible says. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. And whatever is not added by God, praise the Lord anyway. Because if you have God, you got everything. Yeah. Now that's a difficult concept when you're talking to somebody who's desperate for love. It's a difficult concept. You know why I'm thinking about this so profoundly? A young kid just came up to me with tears in her eyes because she thought, I have to, you know, have this boy. I have to marry him. He's the perfect one. And in her pursuits, she goes and gets pregnant. That's where the tears come from. And now the guy don't want anything. He's gone from her life. So now what she has is she's a 15-year-old who's pregnant. Now, I got to tell you something, though. It is the heart. That is in the right place. I want love. I want compassion. I want this. I want that. And then the aim is, oh, if I could just give him what he wants, that's going to capture him. It doesn't happen most of the times. What makes the center of God's heart, what brings you to that position, is not what you have so you can buy something. If you want to keep a friendship, you don't buy it. If you want to keep a ministry, you don't buy it. You might be able to buy it for a little bit until you run out of money. Yeah. Let me tell you a story, and I'll finish there. There's a guy named the prodigal son. He popped up with a lot of money. And he was one of those guys who said, I'd buy beer for everybody. Everybody loves that guy if you're a drunk. Yeah, they flock to him. You know, he's, he's popular. The Bible says the women were all running around him and, you know, everybody's buzzing. He's here. He's like, yeah, I'm popular. I'm good. But it's bought. It's not real. You know how we know he ran out of money and he had no friends. Yeah. Where are all the girlfriends? Where are they? What about all those guys you spent all the nights drinking with? They didn't even want to give him a job. He ends up working on a pig farm. Nothing wrong with pig farms. People like bacon. But that wasn't a job for this guy. This is an uber rich guy. It's like having Elon Musk. Working somewhere in a, in a pig farm. That's not what he does. Not even owning it. No, he was working. And he wanted the food. He wanted the food that the pigs had. You say, that's a big fall. It is. It is somebody who thought, I got a Sabulon. Everybody's always going to like me because I got my bank account to buy the friends and buy the women and all this other stuff. And it's always going to be there. Oh, don't you dare for a moment think this is a rich people problem. Some of you are pretty people. And I said just some. There's a lot of non-pretty here. Yeah. <laughs> and you think that because you're pretty and everybody has to de defer to you, that that's always going to be the way. Just wait, just wait a little. Time will take care of that. Some of you have a gift. You are good speakers. And everybody wants to be around. Oh, wow, yeah, he's a good speaker. She knows, she knows how to put it together. How long did that last? A true friend is not bought. Yeah. A true marriage is not bought. And a relationship that matters is not bought. The prodigal found out, 
and this woman found out. But let me tell you what happened to her. As she was looking at her and saying, I got a way to pay for this thing. My husband is going to love me. That did not happen. Six sons and still not love. And yet something turned in the heavenlies. For the Bible will tell you that God was honoring this woman because her heart was in the right place even though she was looking for the wrong thing. What happened to her at the end of her life? When she went to get married, this is, this is Jacob. Jacob home came up to her, <clears throat> came up to a cave named Mike Pella, her husband, and said, said this declaration. He said, right here in this cave is buried Abraham and Sarah, my grandparents, and <clears throat> Isaac and Rebecca, my parents. And then he said, and here I buried Leah. And in that, there is a great declaration. So he was saying, I finally came to the realization that this was the woman that God wanted for my whole life. Now, that did not come because you gave him six sons. That came because when you put your heart in God, he will fulfill the things that need to be fulfilled. Yeah. Concentrate on the king and serve him with everything you have and he will do what he needs to do. Amen. Go after these things and you're going to find yourself like Solomon, a fool, an old age saying, remember thy God in the days of thy youth before all everything goes wrong. Not this Solomon. <laughs> Solomon in the scriptures. <laughs> in, this, in the scriptures is this, Solomon is saying, I went after laughter, I went after women, I went after wine, I went after entertainment, and he said at the end of the day, everything I found out that it was vanity. Pursuing after things is vanity. You pursue after God, he fulfills the rest. God bless you. Yeah.